Hey guys, what's up? I'm Heyman. Welcome back to my channel. In the last video, we talked about Salesforce platform, how you can create custom objects, custom object apps, list view, and we discussed why it's important. So in this video, we'll be talking about how you can create REST API in the Salesforce platform with the help of Apex. We'll be mainly focusing on three standard HTTP methods, get, post, and delete. And we'll be performing these operations from REST Explorer of Workbench. So without further ado, let's get started. Now let's talk about how you can create the basic REST API in Salesforce platform. We'll be writing basic implementation for three standard HTTP methods, post, get, and delete. To write the API, go to quick find from setup and search for Apex. Now select Apex classes under custom code. There are two places from where you can write the code. One is developer console and another one is directly clicking on the new button. So after clicking on the new button, this Salesforce classic would open and you can directly write your API or your code, Apex code. I'll be using developer console and it will open the whole uh, developer console editor. Now you'll be creating new Apex class like that and provide some name, uh, any name that suits your requirement. So I'll be uh, giving feedback response API in my case. So to save time, what we can do, we can copy the example from Salesforce public API doc and uh, we can make changes on top of that according to our requirement. I have provided the help doc link in the description down below. You can refer that as well. All right, so let's copy this and uh, paste it here and clean this up. All right, so let's understand how this uh, REST API works. So this REST resource is a class level annotation and uh, it exposes the Apex class as a REST resource. You know, each and every resource must have URLs. So we need to provide some relative URL to URL mapping attribute so that REST resource annotation maps that URL to Apex class. And remember that whatever URL mapping you are providing, it's relative to this URL. An important point to note here is that if you are using REST resource annotation, then you must have to define your class Apex class as global. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be talking about three HTTP standard methods, delete, get, and post. So in order to handle these HTTP requests, Apex provides corresponding annotations, HTTP delete, HTTP get, and HTTP post. So now let's start with HTTP post, uh, cut from here and uh, paste it on top of HTTP delete method. This lining. Now we need the custom object API name which we have created. For that, you need to go to the object manager. Here you can find the email response uh, details. So go to the email response detail and all the details about the email response custom objects you can find here. This is the API name which we have to use to insert the record in our uh, REST API. So if you notice here, we are inserting the records in the account object right now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna replace all the account entries with our custom object API name so that we can insert uh, all the records in our custom object. Right, so remember that all custom objects are suffixed by underscore underscore C. Okay, so now let's rename the object as well. Email response. So replace all the entries there, there. There. Inserting the record is very simple. If you notice line number 12, we just mentioned insert an object name. So as simple as that, it'll take care all the things of inserting the records in the DB. Now it's time to work on fields. So there are two fields uh, which we are using to insert the record, NPS response and text response. Uh, this is the NPS response and this is the text response. So field name is very important because the field name like NPS response underscore underscore C will be using to insert the record. So I'm copying and pasting it here and text response underscore underscore C. Uh, I'm just replacing phone with that. So now renaming the parameters name with NPS response and phone with text response. So now check for the data type what we have given for the NPS response. So for NPS response, it's number. Uh, so we'll be providing integer here. 
second parameter is string only and uh, third parameter we don't need because we are dealing with only two fields NPS response and text response so just replace uh, these things accordingly and third parameter is I'm removing that line and uh, uh, what should I return I am just uh, simply returning the response submitted successfully here we go all right guys so now let's handle the get request so if you see do get is already implemented we'll be leveraging that we'll be making changes on top of that according to our object custom object email response I'm just aligning this okay if you see from rest context you can directly get the request and response object and work accordingly if you can see here uh, from the request URI we are getting the last uh, parameter which is email response ID uh, I'm not going to write it feedback ID it's uh, email response ID basically so let's remove it and uh, email response ID uh, will be using and we'll pass this email response ID to the where clause so that it will filter out the record uh, according to our need okay let's replace this with the desired output NPS response is the field and text response is the another field and website I'll remove this yeah so that object is email response underscore underscore C instead of account so yeah and uh, this account sh thing account entity should be replaced with uh, email response and uh, let's replace this object as well yeah i think query looks fine and this return the email response instead of result yeah i think that should be fine okay so for delete request you have to use HTTP delete and notation and all the things whatever we have done for uh, uh, post and get you have to do the same thing like replacing all the relevant fields and entities uh, replace it with uh, email response and uh, for filter email response ID and entity name replacement complete thing I replaced it with email response and uh, delete will be email response object so if you notice for delete we are using delete keyword and giving the object name if you noticed uh, in line number 29 yeah we got a problem uh, here saying illegal conversion from email response to account in line number 20 because we are returning email response to the account and now let's replace account with email response it should fix the issue let's save it okay so now issue is fixed if you want to check the apex class you just created you can directly type apex class in the quick find and open the apex classes and search for your uh, apex class name here okay so this is our class apex class just click on it to open all right this is how you can open it now let's test the rest api which we have created first verify the response so right now only one response we got uh, go to the workbench and go to the rest explorer so now let's create the record first so i have selected post and uh, i'm giving the relative url apex rest api feedback so api feedback is the url mapping which we have mentioned in the apex rest our rest api so now let's form the payload uh, if you see our rest api we have defined two parameters nps response and text response so we'll be using the same to insert the record now let's form a payload in the json format and uh, mention the fields which we have just seen nps response and text response so after defining the payload for post method you can click on execute button so what it will do it will send the request to our rest api and rest api will process the request and uh, send the response back to us so here we go we got the response saying response submitted successfully if you see the raw data raw data is also saying response submitted successfully let's verify the submitted post request refresh it here we go we got the response so now let's verify the get request uh, what I'll do I'll copy the any of the records ID so that I can fetch the records corresponding to that ID from workbench 
uh, I'll append that ID to the related URL and execute it. Uh, if you notice I haven't selected the get because it's a get request so we must need to select the get so once I selected I'll execute that query now our rest API will take care of all the processing and send the response back to us here we go we got the response these are the details and uh, you can verify these details from here now let's verify the delete request in the workbench we'll be selecting the delete option and corresponding to this id we are going to delete the record execute it here we go we got the 200 ok response that means uh, our request got successful let's verify the delete request go to the email response and the interactive email demo list view only one record is there that means another one got deleted successfully that's it for today guys i hope you like this video if you like this video please don't forget to click on like button and if you are new to the channel consider subscribing. Till then, bye-bye. See you in the next video.